Hello everyone, Shroom Raver here, and today I am excited to bring you the second match of our campaign this year in the Pokemon Premier League. Yes indeed. Now, last week we kicked off the PPL with a close, close victory over Celta Dino, led by Wanzee Bayonet. Now, week two, our matchup is against Raikwin, who is the coach of the Nottingham Forest's Curse. Yes indeed. Now, he is coming into this game off the back of a convincing 5-0 victory over the Philadelphia Flygons. And while I'm on that subject, I should say very quickly, um, the Philadelphia Flygons have undergone something of a change. Um, unfortunately, Layson MC, who was their coach, he has had to drop out of uh, the PPL. Uh, he's still around, he's still doing like GFX stuff, and you know, he's still within the group, which is fantastic to have him still, still here. He's just not going to be taking part uh, actively in the battles. His place has been taken by the Trojan Horsey. Um, and the Philadelphia Flygons, uh, they've sort of had a bit of a facelift name-wise. The team is still the same, but they, from here on out, shall be known as the Wicombe Wanderers. So, that's the little news on there. However, you are here for my battle against Raikwin. So, let me get into the team I decided to bring against him. So, going from left to right across that screen there, First up, I decided to go with Gyarados, uh, brought a specially defensive one this time around with Intimidate, uh, and we are rocking Earthquake, Waterfall, Thunder Wave and Roar. It's not really there for its offensive presence, it can still dish out some decent damage, but mainly it's there for, for passing around Thunder Waves, Paralysis, and roaring out threats that decide they want to set up on me. That's basically Gyarados' job. Second member of the team is one of the debutants today. It is Uxie. Yes, I decided to give Uxie its first run out. And whilst this is generally a bulky mon, I did decide to go with a Calm Mind set. Um, Calm Mind three attacks. Those attacks being Psychic, Giga Drain, and Signal Beam. Giga Drain is very nice coverage. Raikwin has maybe a little bit of a grass weakness going on. Signal Beam is there for Celebi if he wants to bring it, which could be a big problem for my team. Now this Uxie has, in, has max investment in HP and special attack, but due to a saving error, it is a bold natured one, which I wasn't quite, you know, looking for. Um, and it is holding the Culverberry. Now, reason for this, Raikwin's squad does contain, in Kingler and Sneasel, two very potent knockoff users. And my team, as I've said many times before, does invite the knockoff. So, you know, I've gone with this Culverberry, you know, just to sort of try and mitigate that a little bit. We'll have to see if it comes into play. Third member of my team, and the second uh, member making its debut, is Zapdos. I've gone with a Timid Scarf Zapdos, uh, Volt Switch, Thunderbolt, Signal Beam again, and Heat Wave. I want to be able to outspeed that Infinite, and you know, if he brings any of his water types, it'll be nice to have Zapdos there as that kind of contingency. Next up, I went with Registeel. Registeel, this one is a physically defensive Registeel, with Iron Head, Thunder Wave, Toxic, and Stealth Rock. Once again, it's not there for its offensive presence. It's there to pass around status, get rocks up if I can, and, you know, in case that Altaria wants to do nasties, I can try and sort of flinch it to death if needs be. But it's mainly there for the statusing and tanking hits. Fifth member of today's team is going to be Whimsicott. I brought Whimsicott back. Um, Whimsicott put in a really good showing last week without being MVP. Um, and this time, I've gone with maximum speed and everything else into special attack. And we've gone with this offensive life orb set. Moonblast, Giga Drain, Taunt, and Memento. Those dual stabs hit Raikwin's squad very hard. Taunt is always very nice on pranks to use, and Memento is literally just my last gasp Hail Mary. If it's all going wrong and he's got something really dangerous, go into Whimsicott, get off the pranks to Memento, and try and go from there. Maybe giving Uxie the chance to set up if it's still around. Final member of the team, I went back to our captain, Mega Gallade. Pretty much the same set as I used last time, that jolly nature with close combat, knockoff and poison jab. But I have switched up Ice Punch, I've put on Stab Psycho Cut instead. Mainly to try and deal a bit better with that Infinite, who we do naturally outspeed, if he decides to bring it. So let's take a look at Raikwin's team. I was fearing a few things and many of them he didn't actually end up bringing. I was fearing the Excadrill, because Excadrill is power. 
I was also, I was afraid of the potential for Galvantula, but I was also fairly certain he wouldn't bring it, simply because I, I do pack Bishop on my squad, and, you know, Bishop thrives on Sticky Web, and a plus two Bishop is, as as it was told to me later on by, by Ethan, I think the exact phrasing he used <coughs> was, plus two Bishop is a death sentence. <laughs> But I was fairly sure he wasn't going to be bringing Galvantula, and you know, I have a Reggie Steel there, so I didn't want to bring um, Boy Sharp. The team Roy went with eventually was Mega Altaria, Rhyperia, Kingler, Vaporeon, Spiritomb, and Infinite. Now, without wanting to uh, stoke Rykwin's ego a little bit too much, the one I feared most was Rhyperia. Because as I've said before, my team does not deal well with powerful rock types, especially those with the Quake Edge combination. It really doesn't deal well with them, so my main aim, I had to get rid of that Rhyperia as soon as possible. That was my main thing that I had to do. The others, I felt that I could deal with fairly well with the stuff I brought. So I was going into this match feeling good, you know? But that is enough of the preamble. Let's just get straight into the battle and see how things played out. So into the battle and I decide to lead with my Gyarados as Raikwin leads with the Infinite. Now, I get the Intimidate off and I figured he's either going to stay in if he has the Thunder Punch or switch into Vaporeon if he doesn't. So he withdraws, so I'm thinking I'm fairly safe with Gyarados, you know, that's a weight off my mind. Uh, he does indeed bring in the Vaporeon, possibly for that Water Absorb. I do end up just going for the Thunder Wave and if he has the Heal Bell, that will pressure him to go for it eventually. So, looking into a good position, I'm going to switch out, make the switch into my Zapdos, just to threaten this Vaporeon as much as possible early game, because it's a bulky sum bitch and I want to get damage on it as much as I can. Vaporeon is going to go for the Wish, so any chances of him being an offensive build, I'm pretty certain it's not anymore. And now, I'm going to make the switch into Whimsicott, pulling the double, predicting his switch into his Rhyperia, in order to take that nice big stab Thunderbolt or Volt switch. And Roy does make the predicted switch into the Rhyperia, and Whimsicott is going to be a huge player for me this game, because it really hits his team quite hard, nothing wants to take a hit particularly. He is going to go into his Infinite, which is an offensive switch, uh, but he is of course going to take the Giga Drain fairly nicely, I mean it does maybe 20%, which is decent. Um, and you know, from that range, I'm dubious as to whether I can take it out with a Moon Boss, so I am going to pull the switch into Gyarados. I feel very safe doing so, because I can get the Intimidate and take either of its stabs very well, but Raikwin has lured me into a full sense of security, revealing that he packed the Thunder Punch all along, and now he has the opportunity to go for it on the switch. Now this next play I thought about very, I thought about it long and hard, pause, and I figured that Gyarados, you know, wasn't going to be too much use, he has two water types and an Altaria, so I do decide to let Gyarados just go down. What that does allow me to do is get the free switch into my Whimsicott, because at the range of health Infinite is at, my Whimsicott's Moonblast is going to take it out, and as I've said, he doesn't really have anything that he wants particularly to switch into an offensive Whimsicott. Ironically enough, the only thing he can do is switch into his Water-type Vaporeon. Um, as you'll see, I go for the Moonblast, and that is a critical hit. And that just proves to me that this Vaporeon is max special defense. I do get the special attack drop on the Moonblast. Now what this allows me to do is it opens up a window of opportunity for me to get my Uxie in fairly safely. Because Uxie is bulky as hell even without investment and at minus one this Vaporeon's not doing a lot. Especially if it's not invested. He does go for the Wish right about now. Which I'm fine with because I pretty much see Vaporeon as setup fodder. At this point, Raikwin doesn't know that I'm an offensive build of Uxie, but he's about to find out. He's got a wish coming in, so he doesn't fear anything I'm going to do, but I do go for the Calm Mind with Uxie. Um, as the Vaporeon is just going to go for the Heal Bell to get rid of that Paralysis. Which is nice for him, but now my Uxie is a real threat to most of his team. Because Calm Minding Uxie is a scary, scary thing, and I do have the coverage to do a lot of damage. He is going to withdraw his uh, Vaporeon as I go for another Calm Mind, and he brings in his Kingler. And it's fairly clear what the plan is here. He's going to go for that 
powerful knockoff. I think he later told me this is a Swords Dance Kingler, which is a spooky thing, especially since he outspeeds me. He does go for the knockoff, but it's that Culberberry and that bold nature coming through, and Uxie just takes such negligible damage. I am then able to go for the plus two Giga Drain, and that will clean take out Kingler from there. Kingler's no great shakes when it comes to special defense. And Uxie is going to chalk up a KO on debut. So good stuff, Uxie. Really happy with that. Now in comes the uh, Vaporeon. And I don't know quite what I was expecting, but for some reason I go for the Psychic here. Which, you know, I probably shouldn't have done. He's going to go for the Scald. And really, he has to fish for the burn. It's basically his only option. He needs Residual on this, so he can then bring in something to revenge me. Whatever he can. Probably the Infinite. So, I'm going to go for the Giga Drain this time around. That school did so little damage, and the Vaporeon is going to go for the Wish. Now, so far on this Vaporeon, I've got it especially defensive. I've seen Wish, Heal Bell, and Scald. And I just assumed that its last move was going to be Protect. I just assumed. So, I try to get cheeky here. I try to get cheeky, predict the Protect, and go for a Calm Mind. Turns out he does not have the Protect at all. He later told me that he is a max special defense set, and that fourth move is Acid Armor. Which is a really nice set to run on Vaporeon, to buff that base 65, I think, defense, to make it just an absolute tank. The reason me going for Carmine didn't work out is because I get burnt on the score, and that's really going to hinder my longevity in the long run. In the short term, it doesn't particularly matter, because now Uxie's at plus three, it is going to be hitting like a truck, I tell you. And right now, the time for overprediction is is over. I'm just going to spam Giga Drain on this Vaporeon as much as possible. It is doing a massive amount of damage to this specially defensive wall that faces me down. Now he's going to go for the Wish once again, trying desperately to get that health back on his Vaporeon. Leftovers, you know, they come around, but it's really not going to help him that much because, as I've said, I'm done over-predicting with this Vaporeon. I'm just going to go straight for the Giga Drain. No reason not to, and that is going to take out the Vaporeon from there. And that is a huge thorn in my side, gone from the field. That Vaporeon could have been a real issue for passing wishes, healing off status, but now it is gone. So Pink Floyd takes a little bit of burn damage, and now in comes the Rhyperia. And I thought, at this point, it's game, surely. This thing is not taking a plus three Giga Drain. And oh my god, it does. I was shocked to my core that it took this, because now what it can do is go for the Dragon Tail, but heartbreakingly for, Ry for Ryquin it misses. And that was just such a big moment in the in the battle. My Uxie gets to stay in and go for a Psychic and take out the Rhyperia. It turns out that was a max special defense AV Rhyperia, which is why it took the Giga Drain. What that Dragon Tail miss allows me to do is get another kill, potentially, with my Uxie. In comes the Infinite. He's going to go for his most powerful attack, Life Orb, Stab, Iron Fist, Fire Punch, Crit, and Uxie tanks it. Absolutely tanks it. Able to go for the Psychic and net his fourth KO on debut. Uxie putting in an astounding performance that I was so proud of. That Crit and the Burn are going to hinder me, though, and they're going to allow Uxie to go down. Now, in comes Alteria, and I know that this is about the differential, this kind of league, but I couldn't take the risk of his Alteria setting up Dragon Dances. I felt like I had to stay in in case he wanted to try and set up and just go for Psychics. As it is, he makes the good play and just goes for the return to take out Uxie, which I'm fine with because he's got Altaria left and he's got Spiritomb left and I feel like I can deal with them. So I'm going to go into Registeel because if he's going to win, he has to set up. That's just a thing. And he does, he starts going for those Dragon Dances, which he needs to do. Um, he can take out the Registeel with enough, because he's got the Earthquake, potentially. But I do go for the T-Wave, and that is basically going to be sort of nail in the coffin for Altaria. Uh, that T-Wave is really going to come in handy, because what it allows me to do is switch straight out, go into Whimsicott, who can take any hit that isn't a Fire Blast in case this thing is mixed. Um, and even at plus two with the Dragon Dance, you know, with the Paralysis, Whimsicott is still going to outspeed. And, you know, the fact that this thing is setting up Dragon Dances means it's not going to be a defensive set. And what that means is that this Moonblast is going to clean take out Altaria from full health. So down goes Altaria, which is a big threat gone. And now the only thing that's left 
is Rykwin's Spiritu. And it's a funny series of events that happen here. Um, I'm going to go for the Moonblast. Um, Spiritomb is going to live it, because Spiritomb is a bulky son bitch. I do get the special attack drop. The reason that's funny is this thing is packing, wait for it, the Hidden Power Poison, specifically for my Whimsicott. But because of the special attack drop, I'm going to live it. I'm actually going to live it, and to maintain that differential, I'm going to switch out and go into Zapdos, who obviously will take this uh, this Hidden Power Poison with the greatest of ease. And I'm Scarfed, so I will outspeed it, obviously, the next turn. Spiritomb is dirt slow as it is. I could probably have had a negative speed nature and still outsped. Going to go for the Thunderbolt and, of course, take out the Spiritomb from there. So, that is going to be the game. Really good game, uh, Royquin. Um, really good fun. Uxy putting in a big amount of work. Um, that Hidden Power Poison was fantastic. I was theorying before the game, you know, Roy is the kind of person who would bring Hidden Power Poison, specifically for Uxy, and it turns out that he did. I was... At the, I was, at the time, I was so sorry about that Dragon Tail Mist. I thought that was absolutely game-changing. We were talking about it afterwards, and, you know, there's a fair possibility that hitting that Dragon Tail would have just delayed the inevitable. But it was very unfortunate all the same. Did allow Uxy to stay alive and get, you know, a couple more KOs in the end. But that is going to be it from this game. A nice 4-0 takes us to two wins out of two, which is a fantastic start to the season. I'm really happy about it. Next week, we face off against the Orlando City Cabaleons, the premier rain team led by Nick, Mighty Mamoswine. It's going to be a very interesting game. It's going to be fascinating to see what we both do. Um, so I encourage you to stick around and, and watch all the games as they happen. Um, talking of watching games, definitely go and subscribe to Ryquin. His links will be down in the description below. Uh, on his channel, you will find his version of this match. You can see what was going through his mind as the match progressed, uh, along with all his other games. Uh, the PPL, uh, Twitter and YouTube, they will be down in the description as well. You can uh, hit up those to look at the Meet the Manager videos. Um, there will be all the playlists of the games on the PPL YouTube channel as well. And through that, you can find all the people who are involved with the PPL. And I highly suggest that you go and check them all out. Give them your time. Give them your subscriptions if you really can, because they're all fantastic people. Certainly check out um, Trojan Horsey. As the newcomer to this league, his link will be down in the description as well, just so you can definitely check him out. But that is going to be it from this video. Thank you very much for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed. Keep supporting Paris Tech Germain, guys. We're going for the top. But that is going to be it. Thank you once again for watching. And I guess I'll see you next time. Laters.